clerk, please call the roll. Mr. Esposito? Here. Mr. Holland? Here. Mr. Lightfoot? Here. Chairman Rocco? Here. Mr. Yolovich? Here. Is there anyone signed up for public forum? There is not. Is there anyone present who is not signed up to speak and who would like to address the committee at this time? Approval of the minutes. You have the November 28th, 2011 minutes before you. They will stand approved unless the clerk is notified of any changes by the end of the day. New business. The next item on the agenda is new business, Mr. Clerk. Referral 12-63 authorizes the initiation of the process of so moved. moved by Mr. Legislator Holland, second by Legislator Yolovich. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Item carries. Next item. Referral 12-64, acceptance of agreement. Moved by Legislator Yolovich, second by Legislator Holland. Is there any discussion? Legislator Esposito. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. If I may take the opportunity to welcome you to uh, your new role as chair of this committee. Sorry that Mr. Holland was demoted. <laughs> Hopefully uh, you find it as enjoyable as he did. Um, <laughs> yeah, I guess. Uh, if I may, uh, through you, I'd like to ask about this referral. This is obviously something we've um, had in the past, and the funding level is the same. Um, but I, I found one line uh, curious enough to ask a question about. In the second paragraph, it says $240,000 of these funds will be utilized to support the staff at the planning department, and 25 will be for office expense reimbursement. Um, and I guess it was my understanding that this 265000 was always calculated to be basically what it costs the planning department to support Comita activities. And I'd like to ask through you, Mr. Chairman, is that understanding correct, or is it, is it different than what I'm, what I'm thinking? Through the chair, um, the amount of 265000 is probably more than it costs for um, the Planning and Development Department to staff Comita. Okay. That, okay, that's – thank you. Mm -hmm. Through you, Mr. Chairman. So, the, so in essence, the, the $240,000 number where it says these funds will be utilized to support the staff and programs, that is not calculated based on actual staff hours. That's at the discretion of, of Comita and the county to work out. Through the chair, that is correct. Okay, that's what I just wanted to make sure of. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Any other questions? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Item carries. Next item. Referral 12 65, acceptance of a grant. Moved by Legislator Holland, second by Legislator Yolovich. Is there any discussion? Pretty much the same question that was asked for, for the last referral. Does this amount cover the cost for the planning department to do the work that they have to provide? Through the chair, that is correct. Legislator Lightfoot. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. My, my question, um, new to the committee, um, I was curious uh, about the um, about the uh, development corporation, and what I would like to know is. Um, as a, a planning economic development, um, are we asking for, are we out looking for foreign investment in our, in our community? Are we looking um, for other manufacturers across seas, different countries to come and invest and um, to build jobs, of course? And if, um, if so or if not, um, do we have policy in place to help facilitate that or you know, help, uh, yeah, facil facilitate it. Sure. Um, through, through the chair, um, the majority of our time in economic development is spent on retention, keeping the companies that are here. And in a, at the end of this, you'll be hearing from Mark Peterson uh, from the Greater Rochester Enterprise, whose uh, job it is to attract business to the area. And then he will work closely with us and the state and Rochester Works and our genie to put together packages for companies that would like to come to our community. Okay, I'll, 
Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, as this committee is aware, and Ms. Sal certainly, uh, in past years I've advocated we increase the contributions from the IDA and the IDC to the Planning Department. So for that, I'm glad to see that that's happening here from the IDC. Um, so I want to say thank you. And then just ask if this uh, increase was made on a discretionary basis or is this specifically to reimburse actual expenditures from the, the Planning Development Department? Through the chair, it was to specifically at, um, um, reimburse the Planning and Development Department. Thank you. Um, in three, Mr. Chair, similar to the way we uh, do the contribution from the IDA, why is it that you don't have a sort of discretionary component of funding from the IDC to the Planning Department? Uh, it's sort of in the same realm as we've talked about in the past to, to help support the property tax burden that the Planning Department has on the, the overall levy. Uh, through the chair, the funds that are generated through Monroe County Industrial Development Corporation are used for our other programs, um, and we have a plethora of programs, including great rate, great rebate, and so that money is spent on businesses in the community, whereas the IDA funds um, are not spent specifically on programs. Okay. Thank you very much. Referral 12-66, moved by Legislator Rolovich, second by Legislator Howard. Is there any discussion here? Legislator Esposito. Chairman, if, if I could just ask through you, just to explain the nature of the need for this particular bond. Uh, I'm Tom Goodwin, Planning Manager with the Department of Planning and Development. Uh, through the Chair, uh, this is a standard requirement for us to uh, enter into an agreement with the Genesee Finger Lakes Regional Planning Council. It really constitutes a performance bond and it allows us to uh, transfer the money and work with uh, the Regional Planning Council. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Through you, so on the back of the legislation, there's a check, a copy of a check for $564. Can you, um, is that just the application fee amount? Uh, through the chair, uh, that's the fee that Genesee Finger Lakes Regional Planning Council has to uh, pay basically to an insurance company to cover the performance bond, and that's mm -hmm. evidence that they've actually paid for the bond. Referral 12-67 authorizes the annual moved by Legislator Holland, second by Legislator Yolovich. Is there any questions? All those in favor signify uh, by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Aye. Item carries. Next item. Referral 12-68, acceptance of a grant moved by Legislator Yolovich, second by Legislator Holland. Any questions here? Those in favor, please signify by saying aye. aye. All opposed? Item carries. Referral 12 69, authorize a contract with the. Moved by Legislator Holland, second by Legislator Yolovich. Discussion here. Would you hold your question until maybe we have the presentation by Mr. Peterson? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you all. Um, uh, annually, I usually come and give you a brief uh, summary, and I will keep it very brief in the interest of time. Um, but I thank you for this opportunity to uh, primarily come and thank you for your support for our Greater Rochester Enterprise. As, uh, as Judy mentioned, uh, we primarily work in the attraction space. It's one of the more challenging spaces for bringing new companies to a region, but an important part of economic development. Um, I'd like to point out a couple of highlights um, from this year. Uh, Jerry hosted 20 site visits. Um, that may not sound like a lot, 
but uh, to get a company to a site visit level where they bring senior executives into town either once or more than once um, is sort of an important bellwether and uh, usually takes somewhere around 150 projects in the pipeline in order to produce that level of uh, site visits. Um, those site visits were from 13 different companies. Um, if all had uh, gone forward with their projects, would have represented $635 million in potential new investment and nearly 2,500 new jobs. Um, as a result, in these crossover years, so they're not directly correlated, but we did announce 10 project wins this year, which is, uh, is a new record for a single year. Um, they uh, provided uh, the creation of nearly 844 new jobs. Um, and a gross uh, uh, total capital investment of $52 million. Of those uh, 10 projects, six of those projects were in Monroe County. Um, we cover a nine county, we're a regional EDO, a regional economic development marketing organization, and so we cover the nine county um, area. Um, but obviously, much of our activity is in Monroe County um, because that's the bulk of where the population and the jobs um, are and the companies are already. Uh, Monroe County is the most significant contributor of any of the nine counties um, to the work of Greater Rochester Enterprise, and we work very collaboratively on a regular basis with uh, Comita and the, uh, Monroe County itself. Um, we also have a new initiative in Canada, um, working with Canadian companies that I expect this year to produce uh, strong results. Um, we played an important role in the Finger Lakes Regional Economic Development Council, and we'll continue to do that. One of our roles with the council is also to stay directly connected with our IDA partners in all nine counties and to, and to give them the kind of information they need and allow for them to um, provide additional uh, information to the council, and uh, we tried very hard to uh, do a lot of that work. Our primary objective is to market the region to make sure we are on the radar screen and in a broad sense so the opportunities that um, might be open to our region um, that we get a legitimate shot at. One of the ways that we do that is with our work with nearly 500 national site selectors around the country that we speak with on a regular basis, nearly monthly uh, uh, in most cases. And uh, it is those personal direct relationships that have a lot to do with whether or not we're able to bring new jobs and new projects to bear. Part of our process is also to get the region on the radar screen, and uh, you'll often see rankings, um, competitive rankings, both nationally and worldwide, that feature um, what's going on in our region, um, the MSA that is the Finger Lakes region. Um, just one that I'll mention to you that we're very proud of this year. Last year, um, uh, uh, Business Facilities Magazine, which is a key publication for national site selectors, recognized our region as the number one region for new job growth in the United States. The Brookings Institution just released a ranking about six weeks ago, ranked uh, the Rochester MSA as the 46th best metro economy in the world and the third best in the United States. Now, while there can be some argument as to whether or not if we're third best, how challenged the rest of the United States is, but the fact remains that our growth has been very strong and compared to other regions of the country, and uh, we believe that the outlook for the future, despite challenges at some of our large corporations, corporations like Kodak, um, the outlook for future job growth and new uh, jobs through attraction next year is uh, even better than it was in 2011. Uh, that's all I have, but I'm happy to answer any questions, Mr. Chairman. Questions? Who is the largest contributor to the Greater Rochester Enterprise? The largest contributor is Monroe County between a combination of their support from um, Comita um, and uh, the county itself. Um, so together, um, that makes up uh, a total contribution that is the largest of any of our contributors. It's important to recognize our contributors are about 85% private um, sector, um, and about 15% are partnership agreements, marketing agreements, and our support um, from um, our partners in the IDAs. I'd like to ask, uh, what's the city of Rochester contributing? The city of Rochester contributes $50,000 a year, uh, the same as uh, the county of Monroe, um, but there is no additional support. Um, we receive an additional $100,000 in support from Comita, which makes the county the largest contributor. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as I was asking earlier, you know, about, um, you know, marketing ourselves and foreign direct investment mm -hmm. um, as we are you know, looking at global, globalization, mm -hmm. and has the market with, um, well, we know that manufacturing probably, I'm thinking, this isn't my 
field, but okay. But I'm thinking that manufacturing is a big business uh, where a lot of investors may want to come to our area. And what I um, just recently heard about was Unilife, um, which is a retractable needles for safety and stuff, and they manufacture them in Pennsylvania. So the thing is, is that I guess my question is, are we looking outside of the U.S. to to market others? And do we, since that you was on the New York State Finger Lakes um, governing body there, um, do we create, do we have the policy in place to attract them to, or is it something that we need to be doing to help? So. Well, there certainly are some things that the state could do to make foreign direct investment easier. Um, but having said that, um, we target from an attraction standpoint our efforts all over the world. Um, we have had success in recruiting uh, companies from the United Kingdom, from Western Europe has been very strong for us. Uh, German company um, is the partner in a new project that was just announced last week out in Batavia. Um, Alpina Foods, uh, another yogurt producer that uh, is in our region, uh, coming into our region is from Colombia, uh, South America. Um, Brill America a few years ago from Italy. And so, yes, we do a lot okay. with outside um, uh, the United States. In fact, that's where some of the most exciting opportunities for new companies, at least from an attraction standpoint, are is outside the United States, those who want to break into the U.S. market. Thank you, Mark, uh, and through Mr. Chairman, if I could ask, um, the $50,000 level that we're approving today from the county and mm -hmm. the city contributes, that's what you call your board level contribution? Yeah, the way that our bylaws are structured, um, um, uh, a $100,000 contribution um, allows uh, an entity to have uh, to place two members on our, our governing board, um, $50,000 one member, and for a $25,000 contribution, uh, an organization is allowed to propose a member, but if all the seats are filled, there's no guarantee that they'll have a member. We have 28 um, board seats that are filled. Two are filled by representatives from Comita and one from the County of Monroe. Okay, and so of those 28, they're all paying board members? They are all state. paying board members, yes. Terrific. Well, I um, certainly am gonna say yes to today's referral and, and, and you know support the work that Mark and you do. I, I'd like to commend you for the job you do. I know you work very closely with Judy and her team, and, as well as uh, members of the state, to to really play in a very competitive space, um, to say the least. And uh, <laughs> it's starting to, to reap dividends in some of the deals we've seen. I know there's a lot more that are out there. I encourage you, just certainly on my behalf, and hopefully with the blessing of this whole committee, to keep after it, keep working hard, and, and hopefully more good things will happen. You got it. We're going after it. Good. Thank you for your support. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Please signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Item carried. Um, at this time, is there any unfinished business to come before this committee? There being no unfinished business, the February 27th, 2012 meeting of the Planning and Economic Development Committee stands adjourned. The next meeting of the Planning and Economic Development Committee is scheduled for March 26, 2012.